I want to bring in Steve Kornacki now. What's interesting here, and we alluded to it at the top of the show, Steve, right, um, is that Ron DeSantis' altitude has descended since, let's say, December, January, over the spring. Now, the huge caveat to all of this, as I know I don't have to tell you, is the, the actual voting isn't going to start for months. It is still super duper early. So a grain of salt on the polling here, but it is a bit of a snapshot, at least, of the state of the race right now. Yeah, it's really interesting, Hallie, because, I mean, look, uh, here's the list of candidates that in the next hour, I guess, we expect to see this to be joining. And then there's also this second list of potential right. candidates who've been making noise the last few months. And I think part of that is related to what you're talking about, where DeSantis, you know, a lot of buzz early in the year. Polling hasn't, you know, tracked with that so far. And so I think you've got some others now saying, hey, maybe there's an opening for me. So you take a look. This is the real clear politics average right here. And you see, obviously, the Trump's way out in front. DeSantis is sitting there now over 20 percent, but it was tighter at the start of the year. But there is a big line there after DeSantis. Everybody else is mid single mm -hmm. digits or lower. And so I think this is the challenge. This is the question for DeSantis as he launches this campaign, has a chance to kind of hit the reset button here. Is he able in the next couple weeks to move that number up to get closer to Trump and to really make this look like a Trump or DeSantis race and to leave everyone else in the dust? And would that potentially cause some of these potential candidates not to run? Would that, you know, hurt them in their ability to gain traction? Because what DeSantis really wants, obviously everyone's always wanted against Trump, is that clear one-on-one -on -one shot. Does this yeah, launch with DeSantis give him an opportunity to move up toward that? I sort of sigh when I hear that, Steve, because I'll tell you that folks close to DeSantis will kind of brush off the numbers, at least right now, they think, um, in, the, in the words of one source that I spoke with, you know, this is still early days, basically. But when I hear the phrase, like, let's get to a head-to-head -head matchup, like, did we forget about 2016, right? Because, I mean, in, in that instance, um, it, there, there are just, it feels like there are lessons from 2016 that could play out as it relates to 2024. Well, yeah, and I think that gets to it. If DeSantis is able to run an impressive campaign here, connect with voters, do well as he campaigns in these early states, does he head off what happened in 16? Because what happened in 16 right. was he had a bunch of candidates. There was in the no head-to-head. -head. Yeah. Right. There was a bunch of candidates in the mid-double digits here, and it was very— so. And in fact, take a look at this. This is 2016. This is how Trump got the nomination. You had four standalone contests in February before you got to the biggies. And if you remember, Trump lost the first one. Ted Cruz beat him in Iowa, and there was all the talk that, hey, maybe this Trump thing is going to fall apart. He bounced back in New Hampshire, in part because the field was so muddled. Remember, Chris Christie went after Ron DeSantis, and that debate really took him down a notch. Then Trump was able to win with less than a third, a little bit less than a third of the vote in South Carolina. He was off and running. What nobody was able to do, that entire campaign in 2016 on the Republican side, was score two back-to-back -back big wins mm. over Trump. Mm -hmm. Could DeSantis... Do what Cruz did, win Iowa. Could DeSantis roll it into New Hampshire and win there? We never, Trump was never tested in that scenario, losing two in a row in 16. And I think that's one of the questions with DeSantis, if he can get this going. Steve Kornacki, back at the big board. Uh, the, the, the early days of what will be 75 more weeks, Steve, for you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.